Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in for another Fireside Stream. My name is Carrera Koenig, Culture Editor at Fashion Snoops, and I am pleased to be in conversation today with Susie Naren and Anthar Karana of the Ansu School of Sound. Antar Karana is a music composer and sound healing practitioner native from the land of Hakari Tama in the Andes, just north of Colombia. He is a guardian of traditions, ancestral music, and medicines of the Condor Nation. Susie Naren is a sound therapist based in Scotland with over 20 years of experience in music and sound healing. She is passionate about sharing the power of sound and extends this gift to others through individual treatments, group sessions, workshops, online recordings, as well as retreats. Hello, Susie and Anthar. Hello. <laughs> hello, hello. Nice to be here. Hello, Hi. We're so Hi, grateful boys. that you guys are speaking with us today and made the time to speak with us, um, especially in, in terms of our rebirth, rebirth sentiment. This sentiment of rebirth is really about second chances. You know, after this big pandemic moment, everybody was kind of looking around and seeing all the things that didn't work for them and looking to improve them in their, in their individual lives. You know, all the old habits uh, and all the old baggage that we were carrying with us, we're really looking to shed and move forward with a clarity of conscience and a knowledge of our bond to the earth. So I'd love to first just ask you guys about the work that you do at ANSU and your mission in a broader scope. Hi, so uh, I'll, I'll answer that one. So yeah, the ANSU School of Sound, we set that up um, for around six years ago with the mission really to share sound healing training with um, anyone who was wanting to end up working with sound with groups or individuals. We were finding a lot of people coming to us asking, can we help? Uh, can you help children with autism? Can you help adults with Parkinson's? Can you work with terminally ill people? All sorts of different, very deep and, and required sentiments, you know? And so we realized we wanted to create more people to take sound into the community. So there's two real aspects to ANSU, which is one is sound healing training that we do. We also deliver sound journeys together and we've been doing that for a long time. And the second part is sort of building community as well and that connection to the earth, community of people and community with nature. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel like this time is so unique to culture because it's like the whole world is searching for medicine, you know, healing and medicine, whether it be for the pandemic mm -hmm. or the anxiety that we all have from being inside and away from our support systems. So one thing we've been exploring at Fashion Snoops is the rise in alternative medicine and how people are looking for alternative definitions of the word healing and medicine. I think I saw a statistic that said that 91% of people in France are interested in alternative healings for at least minor ailments. Um, so it's really picking up steam globally. Um, so I'd like to know from both of you, what does medicine mean to you and how does your work revolve around this topic? Okay, thank you. Yeah, well, thank you everyone for being here, first of all, and for the invite. And <clears throat> well, the, as you say, the world medicine is becoming highly, highly used in different places. Uh, seeing from the ancestral way of life, medicine is absolutely everything that exists. And every possible aspect of life is truly a beautiful opportunity to explore that medicine for whatever insight has to come into, into life. These days, we see that lots of the indigenous, um, <clears throat> um, sorry, lots of the indigenous um, kind of a sense is spreading through the world and people are more and more interested into understanding their origins and their roots and the, <clears throat> the places where they come and, and how these ancient ways of healing can have a true impact into people's life in this modern life. Because as we know, maybe modern medicines, um, obviously most, many of them are very um, effective and very impressive. Uh, we can't deny that. But in the same way, I think people are finding that the, the way of support and the way of um, receiving that um, 
yeah, that support basically on a one-to-one -one level, it doesn't go as deep because people feel that maybe they are only considered the way, the external way, their external layer of their life. Whilst when you go into the indigenous side and you speak about medicines, then these medicines go into the very core of things. And when you start observing that you might have a pain somewhere, and then you only treat the pain there externally, then fine, that, that could help you. But then the pain is going to come maybe on the other hand, in the other arm, in the other leg. And it's going to represent in many other ways in your life. Whilst when you go to the roots of it, uh, you might realize that actually what is triggering that pain is a deep uh, emotion that has been trapped within yourself. And when we go into this way of medicine, old way of seeing medicine, ancestral medicine, indigenous medicine, uh, then we want to go into that root, into that core of it. And it might spark so many other things. But, you know, it, when people are ready for it, then if you, if you know the call, you are ready, ready to do a deep healing, then you're really ready for the true medicine for your life. And everything we say in the, within the context of our traditions, we say every, and we even sing songs to honor this, which is everything is medicine, everything has medicine on it. You know, even if it's a bad experience that we consider, it has a medicine because it brings us awareness about something. So absolutely everything, experiences, music, uh, plants, uh, minerals, uh, landscapes, everything that happens in life is a medicine, really. So that is uh, it, the, the, what makes it um, much more uh, digestible is that we spend some little time to observe what happens and how I integrate it into my life. And then the true medicine has an effect on me. I love that, that everything is medicine. I think that's such a beautiful sentiment. Uh, Susie, do you have a personal definition of medicine? I think, um, well, yes, what Antar said, how could you <laughs> change it from anything to that? But yeah, I mean, it's the same principle. Um, and that's what I think works really well about when we work together. Antar brings in that sort of, those ancestral roots. And but at the same time, it's like the same understanding through complementary holistic therapies and what people call alternative medicine. I, I prefer not to use that phrase alternative because there is a role for mainstream medicine. I do believe, you know, there are some, you know, surgeries and different things. There is, there is a role. Um, so complementary medicine is more about sort of working together. But yes just like what Antar was saying, very much the mainstream medicine, orthodox medicine, tends to treat the symptom, as we know. And whereas in therapies, we're working to get to the root of the system. And I think um, that's where sound is so powerful as well with that, because it really can help. It, it travels right through the whole body. It, and it's an energy medicine, and it will connect and shift things and balance things and bring things into harmony so yeah i mean i think it's a beautiful word medicine and I, I you know really we the as consciousness is continuing to rise and people are becoming more um connected with that word i think we are going to understand it on a, on a different way yeah so everything is medicine is beautiful and but also then to work with somebody who's going to help facilitate a person's journey with that and facilitate a healing Okay. How has the pandemic changed the work that you guys do? Has it shifted online or have you even maybe had to shift how you do your practice to, um, to, to um, incorporate this, this digital world that we're all living in? What, what's that experience been like as a practitioner? Yeah, well, I, I, I was sort of up and running um, within a couple of weeks of the lockdown in the UK. And um, yeah, everything moved online. And it's been great, actually, because it, it's now reaching people who normally wouldn't be able to come to our events because normally we would do everything face to face and teaching would be here in Scotland and the events were in Edinburgh and the training is in the Scottish borders. And um, now we've, you know, we've both been running events online and Antar can talk about some of his work. And we, we both work separately as well as together with the Ansu School. So... Um, and now we've completely turned our course around into an online course, which is starting in November. And um, so it's a, 
a certificate in creative therapeutic sound and it's specifically to help people to learn about how to work with sound themselves and with their communities and we we're going to do some additional training this year on delivering online because there's been a lot of technological <laughs> learning going on, on on both sides and um, we've had to get up to speed quite quickly although Antar is normally a bit better than that than me but I've had to learn quite a lot about getting getting everything online so it's changed everything massively really it has flipped it all up around but you know people come used to come to sound journeys in person and they would not really be allowed to snore because it would be <laughs> disruptive for the next person or you know they had to be relatively quiet whereas now they're at home in their beds or in their comfortable chair and they're more relaxed they're not traveling so you know all these environmental benefits um there's no no extra traveling they can relax they can be um more comfortable and also they can just <coughs> rest you know people would often say um at the end of a sound journey a group sound journey oh i wish we could all just stay here for the night you know and uh now they do they you know they they just turn off the computer and they can because people get into a very deep relaxed state so it is nice if they can then remain in that state and get the benefit of it and then continue to rest or go for a nice walk or something like that rather than getting up and packing everything up and getting in the car and driving an hour and all that, you know. So, yeah, it's changed things in a, a lot, a lot of ways, definitely. Yeah. Antar, you got, what would you say from your side? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there is, you know, there is a, a big thing and a big teaching that we've been weaving here with elders, which is talking about uh, this big uh, opportunity that we've all given by being sent by this Mother Earth back into home to, to have a good time of reflection and, and to really revise how we are weaving our life and how we're doing things. And of course, one of the things that came was, uh, for me strongly, if you can't go to the mountain, let the mountain come to you. And I got quite frustrated because I live here in the Andes in the mountains and internet here was, uh, I, I really struggled for about five, six months uh, to try and get this to work and to be able to do this. Um, so I recognize that when we are aligned with our purpose, there is not much that is going to try. Well, there's going to be many things that is going, are going to try to stop us. But uh, when we are true aligned with our purpose, we will always find a way. And this for me has been a great way to actually, it's the first year in 18 years that I haven't traveled to the UK or to Europe. And it's the very first time that I've been spending the whole year here uh, in 18 years. Uh, I've been always traveling and sharing and, and yeah, touring and things like that. But then this year, the mother gave me the great gift to stay here and uh, ab absolutely loving it and absolutely loving the way to, you know, to be connecting like this. But in the other hand, the other side of it, I think one of the main messages that I've been trying to share when, in, in all these different sharings that I've been doing recently is that also there is this great challenge of us to to understand and undertake this moment that we're, that we're experiencing and think about our future generations, especially the children right now, because as adults, we have a great challenge now to um, how are we gonna make children understand that these times that we're passing is not what life is about. It's not about separation. It's not about finding ways to avoid each other. It's not about finding ways of being completely away from each other. It really is a transitional time. And how are we going to leave this message so clear for the future generations to understand that eventually we all should go back into this uh, unity and to, for example, uh, uh, then understanding and acknowledging the great possibility of what sh you, you were explaining and, and you know, knowing that people have a different setup that they can enjoy even more and maybe some people who never had been able to come, they can now and they can even travel to Colombia to come here and, and listen to what I'm doing. But at the same time, um, a, great, a great element of these gatherings and these things is actually about community. It's actually many times what people feel when they are searching for this word medicine it's actually not the medicine itself. The medicine they were looking for is to gather with people, is to sit in the fire with people, is to listen to some beautiful music, to some beautiful words, and to hug each other, and to feel each other, and to share some beautiful meal. 
that was the medicine they were okay fine then the plant comes and maybe this comes and then that comes and, okay fine that's fair enough and then you have an experience that's fair enough but actually what transformed your life is to have realized that you could have arrived to a place where you felt connected where you felt welcome where you felt a, a sense of belonging and that transformed your life so that's when medicine becomes a massive word a bigger word and i truly truly pray that we can go back to those days sooner than later. It's interesting, Susie, that you mentioned the accessibility now of all these different, um, these different um, practitioners, these, um, of, of your work and how so many people around the world can now have access to it, but at the same time, Anti, what you're saying about um, the touch in the community, that's something we've been tracking at Fashion Snoops as far as like a touch crisis, where even before in, in maybe modern civilizations, we were alienated from our neighbors and our communities, but specifically now, like the, the whole sensation of touch and hugging and, and even shaking hands is gone. And, and that's a huge component of wellness that we're missing. So I, I think it's wonderful that you, that you bring that up. My final question, and, and maybe you answered this a little bit in what you just uh, said, but in the sentiment of rebirth, we talk about how indigenous cultures and people um, can provide the answers to what we are truly missing in modern life, as far as sustainability and community values and even spiritual connectedness. What lessons can people learn from the art of sound healing? Well, um, what you mentioned is represented in the tradition as the two spirals of creation. So one spiral is the ancient world, and the second spiral is the modern world. They used to be connected. There was a bridge in between. But through the stories of our elders, uh, we got to understand that this bridge was broken. And then a, a great sense of separation began. So the ancient became the ancient, and the modern became just the, ancient, the modern. So modern, uh, modern world lack or lack the understanding or the, the, the deep understanding of the ancient and the ancient lack the, the deep understanding of the modern. So they, they became separated. Um, through these changing times, this, this broken bridge has begun to be rebuilt through many things. It's a, it will be a long story that obviously time was here. I, I won't go into that just now, but um, many things have been happening ever since. And it's not from only saying these words, but I think those who are listening probably, you have uh, realized that there is a change in the air, that science is more and more accepting the power of the ancestral understanding of the world. Because if we understand that the fast science and everything that is happening right now is destroying so fast our mother. And when you start trying to understand what, how the ancient world was living in coexistence with the mother without creating any damage. So they, they, they have become asking themselves, hang on a minute, you know, we, we probably need to listen to this world, this world. Because there's surely there is a lot of um, wisdom on it. Because how come that they live forever and never the, the mother suffer? And now we've been living for a hundred years and she's just completely dying. Um, so obviously, many of these approaches start get start happening, and one of them is sound healing, as you mentioned. Why? Because if you see, I mean, sound and I mean, it's actually used in many in many things related to modern medicine. I mean, if you start thinking about uh, ultra ultrasound, how the ultrasound you can actually see inside a body using frequency. And you can even just uh, do different sorts of surgeries nowadays with ultrasound that you know, can, can just be uh, directed to certain specific places in your body to create uh, certain benefits. But if we go, that, that's an area, but if we go deeper into that, then you will realize that actually, to me, as a result of my travelings and explorations through the world, I could probably say, it's quite ambitious to say, but I think I could say that every single um, community in the world uses music or sound as a great master element of the honouring, of the gratefulness, of the creation, of anything that belongs to the community, which means belonging to this mother, belonging to this world, honoring this world, and do whatever you can for this mother to be healthy and give us what we, and replenish us with what we need. 
So <clears throat> if you go back into ancient traditions, sound is always there. The way I, w I grew up since I was a child and, and a young person, understanding that sound was basically so powerful and sound no conceived as music necessarily, but sound, like deep sound, like the deep sound of a drum, the deep sound of, of a voice, the deep sound of people dancing together. That is extremely powerful. And me as a musician was always wondering why, how come that, that, that you know, that such simple sounds can trigger such things. So I think um, that's where uh, this indigenous understanding and concept of sound and music and healing, they are absolutely directly related. And medicine, as you say. So all these words we've been talking about today uh, collide on the understanding of the ancient world. And I think the more we understand this, the more we are going to understand that this here, the ancient, and this here, the modern, are two sides of one bridge. And the bridge is this third element that connects both of them. So the better we create and the better we build this bridge on understanding the ancient world and the modern world, then this is the time that our elders have talked about, the time for the bridges, where this end cannot be weak, nor this one. Both have to be strong. We have to be strong in the modern so we can do these things and we can talk to you from the mountain, but also we have a strong foundations so that we honor all this beautiful mother that is replenishing us and giving us actually the possibility to do it. So I think understanding and accepting and connecting more with your deep roots are, no, uh, are going to actually um, make your current life, your modern life and your this life that we're living right now a lot stronger. So I think that's, that's what I could that's really say about that. And I was just gonna just add on to that as well. And one of the th things with working with sound or therapeutic sound or sound healing is that the instruments that we're working with like some of them are very, you know, ancient, like the drum and, and the Tibetan bowls and things and even gongs. But then we're going, we've got modern uh, modern instruments like the crystal singing bowls and, and different things. So you've got this ancient history with in sound healing as well as modern instruments, but also modern understanding as to how it's happening and why it's mm -hmm. happening and how it benefits a person with brain waves and vibration and frequencies. And, you know, they can kind of actually understand it on a scientific level now as well. So you've got that modern scientific understanding as well as these ancient roots and, and powerful sounds and things. So yeah, that's another way. Mm -hmm. hmm. I mean, it's so powerful. I was even reading about how, of course, sound is, is a healer, but the absence of sound is even something that a lot of conservational efforts are looking to protect, especially in um, rainforests where maybe there's a lot of noise pollution and it's, it's hurting the animal's ability to hunt. It's um, like noise pollution is, is harming our ability to sleep. And so even preserving quietness is, I mean, it's all these things that we don't maybe fully um, are conscious of are uh, affecting our bodies and our mind states. Yeah, I mean, sound can be a very destructive thing, as you're saying, and, and a constant sound outside, it can really knock somebody's energy off, you know, and can really cause a lot of emotion and anger and frustration and things and silence. Silence is a key part of actually our work, you know, actually being in the silence and helping and supporting other people to learn to be in that silence because people tend to try and fill each space and some, you know, they're always talking or whatever, always thinking. So it's about slowing all of that down and, and reconnecting to that, just that stillness, that inner stillness. Yeah. Well, thank you both for, for speaking to us today. I think these insights are extremely powerful, especially in this moment, whether it be for, for businesses and planning your line or even just understanding ourselves as people. I think that um, what, we've, what we've talked about today will certainly give our, our audience something to think about. So thank you guys so much. You're very welcome. Thank, thank you. you for inviting us. Nice yeah, to meet you. Yeah, thank you. you. <laughs> bye, bye. Bye just now. Bye, ciao.